share with you tonight on the subject clearing and cleaning out negative and destructive beliefs in your subconscious mind. Clearing and cleaning out negative and destructive beliefs in your subconscious mind. I want to read Ephesians from chapter 4 from verse 7 to verse, quite a lot of scripture, right to chapter 5 verse 2. Just for me to share with you before we read that, I got saved on John 3, 16. Um, I was 27, I'm going to be 73, so that's, what's that, Dale, help me. <laughs> quite 27 from 73 is 40, 46 46 46 years since I gave my life to Jesus and I was called into the ministry the same year I was saved and so I I got saved on John 3:16 my brother-in-law who was an atheist uh, he actually led me to the Lord and handed me over to Apostle Colin Lafoy. It was in my home. I was an alcoholic and drug addict. And I was now sleeping during the day and drinking and not even going to work. So you may see me today. This is the work of God in my life. And so praise God. And so I remember clearly he opened the Bible and he said, read John 3:16. I read it, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He said, do you understand it? I said, no. And you know, unsaved people don't put on, you know. They tell you as it is. And I will never pull no wool over nobody's eyes as an unsaved person. So he says, let's just pray. So we prayed. And he says, read it again. I read John 3, 16 and it's like, leapt out of the Bible and I just knew God loves me and if I believe I can receive because that's what that scripture said that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life so according to that scripture believing is receiving last Sunday night we shared with you why is it some people get what they don't want and others get what they want in life. It's simply because of your beliefs in your unconscious mind. You have beliefs that negate what you want and beliefs that draw what you don't want. If you can change your beliefs, you can change your life. Because so much of the negative thoughts and the negative self-talk comes from your beliefs. Your beliefs is the veil over your spirit that hinders your spirit from expressing itself. And so I'm dealing with that as we go to the end of the year with you so you, you can live your full life from your spiritual man. So let's read this together. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you henceforth not walk as other Gentiles, unbelievers walk, in the vanity, emptiness of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness and greediness, but you have not so learned Christ. If so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning the former conversation, that's lifestyle, the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, 
putting away lying. Speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that needeth. You work so you can give. You don't work for a living. You sow for a life. But you work so you can give. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit. Don't squeeze the Holy Spirit and hurt the Holy Spirit by your carnalities. <coughs> whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be you kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake had forgiven you. In chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. And be you therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love, as Christ also had loved us and had given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet, swelling, swell, sweet smelling savor. Praise God for the reading of his word. Take note, Ephesians 4, 22 to 24 says, you must put off the old man, form a conversation, the old man, which is corrupt. Then you must be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Not just your mind, but the spirit. That's your unconscious mind. The spirit, the software in your unconscious mind. That's where you must be renewed. Then it says you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. You see, when I changed to come here this evening, I took off a shirt that I wore during the day, and then I put on this shirt. So there was a putting off and a putting on. Now, you cannot do that with the spirit of your mind because in between putting off and putting on, is be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Can you see that in verse 23? Just a short verse. You put off, but then you be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and then you put on. So to change, you need to change the software in the unconscious mind. What is the spirit of your mind? It's beliefs and concepts from the fall of man that you got through your natural dysfunctional parenting and your lifestyle. When you grew up as a child, there was genetic influences that script you. There were social influences that script you, creating beliefs. The way your parents lived scripted you. In fact, that started happening when you were in your mother's womb. And your life's experiences scripted you. And that scripting created beliefs. Beliefs are so important. You need to be able to understand that you have scriptings in your unconscious mind that you don't even know about, that you can see it from the results you get in life. Because your beliefs and thoughts reveal are revealed through the results you get in your life. And so you, you, you can go in. There's a gatekeeper between the conscious, they call it a gatekeeper, between the conscious and the unconscious mind. And if you can get that gate opened, it's possible to erase the nyaga nyaga that's in there. And you can download new software into your mind. Software that can take you to what you want in life. 
software that can give you the ability to receive what you want in life. Software that gives you the ability for you to create what you want in life. There's two aspects to faith. You receive from God and you create it with God. And that got all to do with the beliefs in your unconscious mind. We shared this morning, fatherhood is very important because if you've had a dysfunctional fatherhood, until you can get that cleared up within you, it's hard for you to relate to God as a loving heavenly father. And then you come into the church and it's hard to relate to a spiritual father. I have noticed that because I had to deal with those things myself. When I see people's lives, I study human behavior. I've been studying human behavior for over 45 years. I'd done work for Standard Bank and taught the staff of Standard Bank for every entity in, in KwaZulu-Natal, including doing it on the race course in Peter Maritzburg. And, it's, and I, was, I, did, I was a counselor for all their staff because of this knowledge of God that God gave me. And that made me a wealthy person. And some people, Dale was still working in the bank when I used to do that. And there were a number of young people that were working in the bank. Where's Pastor Dale? Is that correct, Pastor Dale? You were still working in the bank, and I called you out of the bank. I said, leave the job and come and work with me. And that's how you came out of the bank, and you came and become my PA. How many years ago was that, Dale? 22 years ago, that's when I was doing motivational for Standard Bank. I was counseling all their staff. And, uh, and so uh, I'm not thumb sucking something out. of, And that's what has made me successful in life, is to be able to change the way I think and change what I believe and how I believe. You see, God loves us all the same. God wants every one of you to be successful. There's no ways, there's no, not one person here that God doesn't have a good plan for your life. But your beliefs take you away from that. And you're going to change those beliefs. I believe I'm sharing a relevant word for your life. In 1 Corinthians 4, I was saying to you, when I start having problems with sons, I try to see if they had dysfunctional fathers. And I want to say this, 99% of the problematic sons never overcame the hurt of dysfunctional fathers. 99% of people's problems is because they have not become faithful with money to God. And that's the least thing in the kingdom of God. 1 Corinthians 4 from verse 14. I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you, for though you may have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you have not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Wherefore I beseech you, be followers of me. Then verse 17, for this cause have I sent unto you Timotheus, Timothy, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere and in every church. You see here, you have many instructors. This morning we said there are many wolves in sheep's clothing that try to rob you from fatherhood in the church. But you are being taught and you're being enlightened. You must watch some sons who are naughty in the house of God. They, they want the glory without paying the sacrifice. And they cut across what God is doing in the house of God. 
you know them by their fruit. Look at NASB says, I do not write these things to shame you, but to admonish you as my beloved children. For if you were to have countless tutors in Christ, yet you would not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I became your father through the gospel. Therefore, I exhort you, be imitators of me. You've got to imitate a father. You've got to become a chip of the old block. For this reason, I've sent to you Timothy, who is my beloved and faithful child in the Lord. And he will remind you of my ways, which are in Christ, just as I teach everywhere in every church. Very powerful how a father, a dysfunctional father, if you got hurt by a father, if you had a father that didn't serve God, even though you loved him and honored him, his type of lifestyle entrenched beliefs into your unconscious mind. The TPT, listen to how the TPT puts it. I'm not writing this to embarrass you. And you must understand when I teach you these things, my heart is not to embarrass you. I'm not here to scold you or to embarrass you. I, I love you. I love this work. I, I love my call. I'll do this till God calls me away. It's what I'm called to do, to empower people to be successful. I've raised up multi-millionaires with my ministry. And so you, you don't have to feel insecure with me. I am also a loving spiritual father. I love you. And if you walk close enough to me, you will experience his love. There are people that I've hugged that broke down in crying just because I hugged them. That's how we need love. There is a, a drought of unconditional love. So many people are suffering from rejection, suffering from low self-esteem. And it's hard for them to come through. And that's what this church is all about to get you healed. The TPT says, I'm not writing this to embarrass you or to shame you. I had an, un I told you this morning, my father passed away when I was six years old. All I remember, I cried so much. I don't remember once when I sat on my father's lap as a child. I don't remember once when my father played with me. And I loved him. I mean, I had to deal with that when I got saved. And I had to deal with that how I related to my spiritual father, Apostle Colin Lefoy. But it's taken me a long time, many years, to clean myself out through God. And I can't tell you all now, but I will share it again with you as we go on. That's, you'll get enough to, to begin to do some things. Very, very, very important. Only got seven minutes here. So for, for if you were to have countless tutors in Christ, yet you would not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I became your father through the gospel. Therefore, I exhort you, be imitators of me. For this reason, I send to you Timothy, who is my beloved and faithful child in the Lord. And he will remind you of my ways, which are in Christ, just as I teach everywhere in every church. So I want that to just sink in. Verse 15 says, what was that? That was the NASB, sorry. The TPT says, I'm not writing this to embarrass you or to shame you, but to correct you as the children I love. A true father doesn't embarrass children. They correct their children. And if you don't correct the child, then you can't say you love the child. If I see you walking to fall into a ditch, 
and I don't correct you, I can't say I love you. It doesn't matter how much money you give to the church. I'm not moved by your money, man. You can't buy me. You don't have enough money to buy me. So your money means nothing to me. God is my source. And if you bless me, it's because you're a channel of God, not because I'm after your money. So just settle down. I can do without your money. But you need to be participating. You need to be faithful to God. And so he says, though you may have countless babysitters in Christ, telling you what you're doing wrong. That's what a babysitter do. But you don't have many fathers who correct you in love. But a true father to you, but I'm a true father to you, for I became your father when I gave you the gospel and brought you into union with Jesus, the anointed one. So I encourage you, my children, to follow the example that I live before you. That is why I sent my dear son Timothy, whom I love. He is faithful to the Lord Yahweh, and he will remind you of how I conduct myself as one who lives in union with Jesus, the anointed one and of the teachings that I bring to every church everywhere. There is your natural father, and there is your spiritual fathering. It's a wonderful thing if your natural fathering also becomes part of your spiritual direction. But you do need a spiritual father in the house of God that's given to you even though you have a natural father who is saved. It's God's divine order. Listen carefully to me. Your natural father will, will reveal to you where you come from. Your natural father reveals your history. Your spiritual father reveals where you're going to. There's a big difference between where you come from compared to where you are going to. Your natural father cannot show you where you're going to. You need a man of God to do that. <laughs> Some clinical methods of touching base with your born-again spirit. I'm going to skip some things because I want to go through some, some you must be aware of your inner self-talk. There's an inner talk that goes on continually in every human being. That inner voice, I'm not talking about the leading of the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about inner self-talk. It comes out of your belief system. There's a, it's always speaking to you to think a certain way. It's the ultimate veil of your spirit. So you must embark on a way to override that self-talk so you can speak positively into that self-talk. Listen, family. When you speak, your brain's got to stop to listen what you say. When you speak, your mind got to stop to listen to what you say. You cannot speak, and the self-talk is going on at the same time. You actually override it by what you say. I've got two minutes, and I'm going to close. The, there are four main ways I'm going to give you for homework this week. When you are thinking negatively, and there's negative talks coming from within you. You must understand that is taking you away from what you want and taking you to what you don't want. Everyone has that. So it's not about you going mad or something like that. Everyone has it. 
Number one, you must override it, and especially you talking to yourself about somebody else, and especially when you're in conflict or someone says something that's wrong to you, what you believe about what they said is your self-talk. You must start speaking to you about that person, whether it's your spouse, your children, a friend, an enemy, and we all have enemies, but God says you've got to love your enemies. Do good to those that despitefully use you. So you speak out, override the self-talk and say, I love you. Let's try it. Just say those words. Say, I love you. Think about somebody that you're not comfortable with. Think about somebody that the self-talk was negative against. You all have it. Don't look at me with the holy eyes. I'm real. Now, as you're thinking about that person, say to that person with the words of your mouth, I love you. Say it again, I love you. Say it to your dysfunctional father, I love you. Why? Because God is love. God is love. God is love. And he even wants you to love your enemies. The second one you must do, Say, I'm sorry. Say, 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 I am sorry. Say the second time, I am sorry. Third time, I am sorry. So what are you sorry about? You see, you are sorry for how you're thinking about somebody. You're sorry because of what, how you're believing and what you're believing about somebody. But most of all, you're sorry because you're taking responsibility. If you continue doing what you're doing, you'll continue getting what you're getting. If you think God will change your life without you changing your beliefs, you've got a rude awakening, nothing will happen. You're going to go around this mountain again. Say, I'm sorry. The third one you say, you're speaking to yourself. Say, please forgive me. Say it again. Please forgive me. Third time, please forgive me. Why do you say forgive me? Why are you asking for forgiveness if that person is wrong? You're asking forgiveness because you are taking responsibility for your life, for healing and wholeness. You are your most important asset after God. There is no one more valuable than you. Jesus put it like this. You love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. The second is likened to the first. You love your neighbor as you love yourself. You can never love somebody more than you love yourself. As I got ready tonight, I looked at myself in the mirror. And I said, hey, I love my body. I love you, Basil. When last have you looked at yourself in the mirror and said, hey, I'm so in love with you. You see, if you don't love yourself, you can never love somebody else. That's a level you love everybody else. So start saying to other people what you've been thinking negatively about them. I love you. Say it, I love you. Say it the second time, I love you. Third time, I love you. Then the fourth one, I'm talking about clearing and cleaning up your unconscious beliefs. Thank you. Gratitude is one of the greatest emotions to, take your, to change your life. You can never be grateful and talk negative about the person that you're grateful for. Think about it. You only talk negative about somebody else within you because you're not grateful. But gratitude, in my estimation, there is no higher emotion than being grateful. Because the opposite of that, we take everything for granted and walk with a chip on our shoulders. Say thank you. Say to your enemies, thank you. 
Say to those that you've been talking negatively within yourself and thinking negatively about, say thank you. Amen. Why? Because the will of God is to give thanks in everything. Four techniques I leave with you, and I'm going to pray for you. I love you. Say, I love you. Say, I'm sorry. Say, please forgive me. And say, thank you. Now you practice that because godliness is practice. It doesn't come because you feel like it. You just do it because it's right to do it. It will work for you. And if you will do it enough times a day, you'll start desiring to live that way. Don't wait for you to feel you want to do something. You do something and that changes your feelings. Have you received something tonight? Let's stand together and let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for each one under the sound of my voice, all our online viewers. I pray, Lord, the Holy Spirit will continue to teach. Even when my voice is silent, the voice of the Holy Spirit will declare and decree, this is the way. Walk in it. I bless each one of you tonight in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And you've begun a new journey in your life. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. I decree in Jesus' name, you're going where you've never gone. You're doing what you've never done. You're having what you've never had. You are a trailblazer. You're a history maker. And you're a mover and a shaker. You've come into the kingdom for such a time as this.